Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Lorenzato. This is a short video on osteoporosis, just an overview. Osteoporosis is when bone has less density and less strength. Bone is a continuous is continuously being remodeled in our body. It is affected by two types of cells, particularly the osteoblasts creating bone and the osteoclasts breaking the bone down. Our nutritional status is critical in which electrolytes we supply and what amount and how they're delivered. Chronic inflammatory disease states, including particularly bowel disorders, such as inflammatory bowel disease or ongoing allergies to certain foods, have tremendous impact on our immune system that influence the relative amount of these osteoclasts and osteoblasts and their activity. Physical conditioning is critical. Trauma has a play, genetics has a play, hormonal balance has a play. Our therapeutic interventions for managing osteoporosis are important, but preventing is by far the best thing you can do. Diets rich in vegetables with some fruit and healthy meats are critical. In general, the avoidance of starch and refined oils used in dairy and cooking and avoiding salt will give you a diet that basically produces the optimal bone strength. Diets high in starch create an acidic urine and deliver energy to your cells that are depleted of fat soluble antioxidants. Refined oils do the same. A diet with adequate DHA, the omega-3 fatty acid found in fish and range-fed animals, is important because it helps contribute to the balance of prostaglandins, leukotrienes in your system that keep inflammation from being elevated, producing a state where it is less likely to have changes in your bone structure. Limiting alcohol is critical. People that drink excess of alcohol tend to have very weak bones. And physical conditioning on a regular schedule can be very, very vital to your bones and to the rest of your body. Measurements of bone density using DEXA, a simple electron beam or same type of energy used in x-ray but with very little is very little radiation is a great way to understand if you have a problem with bone density and whether we should be changing your diet. We should look for underlying disease. This is perhaps the most critical aspect of preventing osteoporosis. Is there a thyroid disorder? Is there an inflammatory bowel disorder? Is there a hormonal uh, imbalance that needs to be treated. Treatment with beneficial medicines only when appropriate. There's been an exuberance that has been fueled by the pharmaceutical industry and well-meaning doctors. We should quench that some and look at prevention as our main way of managing osteoporosis. Vitamin D supplementation is very important. The source of calcium frequently can simply be from a diet rich in vegetables and some dairy, but not necessarily particularly a lot of dairy. Dairy has its problems. Some of the terms, primary osteoporosis, I don't like the fact that we have to use these terms because they don't say anything in themselves, but osteoporosis that comes related to menopause is considered type two primary osteoporosis from age is considered type, type one. If it's not type 1 or type 2, it's idiopathic, usually found in youth. A good example would be excessive use of carbonated beverages in youth contributing to osteoporosis is considered idiopathic. But in essence, it is dietary. Secondary osteoporosis is due to another disease process. Well, I would consider excessive drinking of carbonated beverages a disease process. So I already differ in my opinion versus another doctor of what is primary and secondary. Secondary is also due to medication use. Some medications contribute to the, use, to the loss of bone density. Resorptive markers. As bone is lost, it is resorbed, we must measure to understand at what rate and if we are changing it by dietary or medications. We use N-telopeptide, C-telopeptide, and deoxyperidinolene, or DPD, to, to manage this, to understand. These are used in conjunction with the DEXA scan, looking at the bone density, on a serial basis. Pro-collagen type 1 in propeptide, or PINP, is good for understanding if bone formation is, is 
occurring, but is frequently not covered by insurance. The test, as I mentioned, DEXA has low radiation, it's a very valuable test. Quantitative ultrasound of the heel has limited use, but serial following or under certain circumstances, it can be very beneficial. Vitamin D levels, I get this frequently because vitamin D has a beneficial effect in lowering rates of cancer and autoimmune disease as well, suggesting we have a general depletion of it in our environment. Markers of bone resorption, as I mentioned, the c tilopeptide from urine or blood is most frequently used. It is better than the uh, NTX or the n tilopeptide um, Osteocalcin produced by osteoblast in bone mineralization may need to be checked as it is hormonal regulatory that is critical. Alkaline phosphatase is used frequently to determine the source of calcium in the bloodstream if it is elevated or depleted. Um, osteo or alkaline phosphatase is found not just in the bone but also in the liver and the kidney. Bone specific alkaline phosphatase determines, is determined by a heat stability mechanism so we can isolate the ones that are, that are due to bone. What are the risks? Steroid use. It is critical to understand if a person is under an ongoing steroid medication therapy because this can cause osteoporosis without any question. Use of other medications, including phenobarbital and dilantin, which are used in seizure disorders, also will contribute. When a person is on Coumadin for a coagulopathy to prevent atrial fibrillation from causing clots that can pass in their system to their lungs and their brain, they also are at risk because they are depleted of the vitamin K that is crucial for good bone strength. High carbonated soda is important to understand if a person has this, or high carbohydrate diets. High protein diets without balance of vegetables can create an acidic urine leading to increased loss of calcium. As I mentioned, inflammatory bowel disease and autoimmune disease, women that are postmenopausal, there's an increased risk of with, with osteoporosis, there is, and uh, the problem of an increased risk of fall, the outcome can be more catastrophic. So a history of stroke contributing to fall, excess alcohol consumption contributing to falls and sports injuries, and diminished muscle mass all can contribute to falls, making the outcome of osteoporosis a bigger event in an individual's life and something we should concentrate on avoiding. Lack of weight-bearing physical conditioning can lead to osteoporosis frequently and when a person is hospitalized and bedridden for even a short time, they lose tremendous bone mass rapidly. What to do? Healthy diet, physical conditioning, vitamin D, vitamin K2 is predominantly the K vitamin that is involved in bone strength. And it is part of solving the calcium paradox or the problem of when a person's given calcium, the calcium instead of going into the bone can go into other tissue. It appears that people given vitamin K2 or with higher vitamin K2 can avoid this problem. Vitamin K2 is in very few foods, so it is given more frequently as a supplement for those individuals with osteoporosis or at high risk for osteoporosis. And we should monitor your bone density. If there's not an improvement through use of vitamin D, vitamin K, the appropriate diet, you may need to be on medications. Very good. That's an overview. There's a more in-depth video that I have on osteoporosis.